Okay, here's a little curiosity for you to look at, and hopefully there will be some interesting chemistry involved. We'll be setting up layers of different solutions in the measuring cylinder here, and you can see the constitution of the layers here on the paper, so we'll be following that. So we start off with 10 centimetres cubed of a sucrose solution that has 120 grams of sucrose dissolved in 90 centimetres cubed of water. So we need approximately 10 of that into the bottom of the measuring cylinder. And to that, we're going to acidify it. We're just going to acidify it in this case with a few drops of concentrated hydrochloric acid, but you could use a much more dilute solution of acid as long as it's acidified. There we are. And if we swirl that quickly, we can get it to mix. So we've got a dense sugar solution at the bottom of the column, which has been acidified. Our next layer is quite complex, so we'll need to uh, mix that in the beaker here. And here are the various solutions that go into this mixture. We start with 10 centimetres cubed of the same sugar solution, 120 grams in 90 centimetres cubed of water, or approximately that. And that goes into the beaker, followed by 10 centimetres cubed of another sugar solution that's been prepared by dissolving 240 grams of sucrose in 360. Of course, that's equivalent to 60 grams of sucrose in 90 centimetres cubed of water. So again, another 10 mils of that, or thereabouts. And we add that to the first sugar solution in the beaker. And into that, we're going to dissolve 0.15 grams of luminol, which I've already weighed out. So there's the luminol. And here's what 0.15 grams looks like. And we dissolve that into the uh, sugar solutions there. Uh, we're also, just forgot, going to dissolve one gram of potassium hydroxide. And so let's dissolve the potassium hydroxide first. That might take a little longer to dissolve. It's uh, a little hygroscopic, so it's stuck to the measuring boat there. And we need to make sure it all goes into the sugar solutions. So there it goes. It is, of course, a very strong alkali, so we need to corrosive material. We need to be quite careful with that. So we're stirring or swirling. It's quite quick to dissolve. You might be able to pick that up when I stop swirling. It's still in the bottom there. But it doesn't take that long. Just a little bit left to dissolve. So again, that's one gram of potassium hydroxide dissolved in the sugar solution that we've prepared so far. Almost all gone. In fact, so far I'm going to add the luminol, so in goes the luminol. Okay. 1.5 grams, just make sure you get every last little bit there. And you can see the luminol being an organic compound, first floats on the top, some of it aggregates together in little clumps, but it does dissolve, um, most of it at least anyway. And quite quickly too. So some of it's dissolved, about half of it. You can see the solution. It's got a pale yellow colour now. Just need a little bit more of that to go into solution. Hopefully all of it, but uh, inevitably we might be left with a few specks undissolved before the camera.
There, most of it's gone. And if you swell a little longer, uh, you should be able to get all of it to dissolve. I'm going to speed this up a little bit. Um, now, last thing that goes into that solution is 15 centimetres cubed. Of this. Oops. So on this camera there, 6% hydrogen peroxide solution. So just adjusting the camera there. 15 centimetres cubed. Here we go. And that joins the sugar solutions and the potassium hydroxide and aluminum to make say, the second layer. Now to introduce the solutions into the measuring cylinder, I'll be using this what's called a layering tube uh, tool for making cocktails and that uh, inserts quite easily into the top of the measuring cylinder there and uh, just enables me to pour the liquids in rather rapidly. If you don't have a layering tool, you can pipette them in slowly down the side. It just takes longer. So in goes my mixture. And you can probably see the liquid filling up slowly on the bottom. Whilst it's doing that, I can prepare my next layer that is going to be composed of five centimeters cubed of the sugar solution. 20 grams in 90 centimeters cubed, so five of that, all about that, and, that. and then 15 centimeters cubed of the second sugar solution, which of course was 240 grams and 360 grams of water. So about 15 of that. Take me up to 20. Again, we need to mix that in a beaker. And uh, I do want to just quickly put the layering tool a quick rinse in the tap. So let's do that. And that's to keep the um, second layer that we're putting in here, or the third layer rather, um, just to try to keep the sodium hydroxide out really. We'll see what makes it. So that's the third layer. The fourth layer is much simpler. It's just 15 centimeters cubed of the sugar solution that we made up by putting 120 grams of sugar sorry, 240 grams of sugar into 360 mils. So that one can be poured straight on top. And in it goes. And we're ready for, once that's in our final layer, which is 10 centimeters cubed of this 0.5 molar iron 3 chloride which is of course uh, deep yellow in colour and it's also quite acidic so we put that in and at the interface of the two layers there you can see the formation of some dark brown iron hydroxide we'll just wait for that to go in and that's almost down and in can remove the layering tool now. Let's take it over the sink. Quick rinse. And finally, the last part of the curiosity is to take some pieces of magnesium that uh, I've cut into little diver shapes there with little arms and little legs and coat it on one side with manganese dioxide, which I've stuck to the magnesium using super glue. I'm just going to drop those in. So in they go. One, two, three little divers. And you should be able to see that they sink down and then rise up to the surface. 